So here we have two charts and the two charts we see are titled female and male because this is how female and male respondents answered a certain question. The question was about how often they ate a certain type of food and when you see the legend here, these are really answers to that question. How often do you eat it? I eat it rarely or I eat it occasionally and so on. Now, for example, if we try to read female here, you will see that this first part, the horizontal blue lines, which represents rarely, is this much on the female chart. Now, how do I really read this? What is the value? You see, it starts from 0.0. .0. There's also a 1.0. I'll explain what that means. First, what happens is you have 0.0, .0 to 0.2. This is like 20% of the entire pie chart. Then you look at the next section 0.2 to 0.4. This is the next 20%. Then you see again 0.4. Okay, let me change the color. Then you have 0.4 to 0.6, next 20%. And so on, if you continue, this is the next 20%. And finally, when you read the last bit, you go from 0.8 to 1 because from 80%, when you add that last 20% to it, it's 100%. Essentially, those percent values have been written as decimal numbers. So you started from 0% here and you ended back here only at 100%. Now, this is how the male chart is also defined. This is not what is giving me the values. So if I want to find out just the rare part from the female chart, I just have to see how much is this little part, this blue part. So I can surely see it's less than 20% because it's not gone as far as this mark. In fact, it seems less than the half mark also so this is this seems to be something slightly less than 10 percent and so on you can read all of the other sections also okay now let's read the question further it says survey specified that infrequently meant more often than rarely but less often than occasionally which means if you're talking about infrequent which is one of the categories here it is more often than rarely that means rare is when you eat it maybe once infrequent would then be twice i'm not giving actual numbers but it is less often than occasionally so they've actually helped us organize the three of these categories in order and the others will now be easy because you think about it the first three have now been talked about then you have frequently obviously frequently will be here more than occasionally also and then not sure is just out of all of this it doesn't fall in the order Okay, so we understand all given information. Now let's just see what is being asked. Let's read this. If you found the analysis of this data set helpful, then hit that like button so that other GMAT aspirants can also learn from it. And to stay tuned with such content, hit the subscribe button below. Now, to take your learning to the next level, we have put together a free trial in which you can experience content in all the sections tested on GMAT Focus Edition. For example, you can build your CR pre-thinking skills, you can learn how to approach statistics questions in graphics interpretation as part of DI, you can learn everything about linear inequalities as tested on the GMAT Focus Edition and a lot of other content. The link for this is in the description. Now, let's get back to the question at hand. Slightly less than dash respondents. So this is about how many respondents and it's not an actual number. If you see, it's a percentage and it's 10% of male or female, female, male. That means you will have to see both of the charts here. So what do I want? Let's read further. Slightly less than how many respondents indicated that they ate the food at most dash. So at most rarely, at most infrequent and occasional. We've till now seen at most with numbers. When I say at most two, it means two or less, right? Two, one, zero, so on. But how about putting it with a word at most rare, at most infrequent? This is where this order that we got in the question is very, very important. When I say at most rarely, this actually only means rarely because there is nothing which is rarely or less than that. That is the least category of all. When I say at most infrequent, you notice is these first two together then infrequent and below that which means at most infrequent means you include rare and infrequent well if you think about at most occasionally then this time you see you will go all the way from occasional to everything below it so this will include rare plus infrequent plus occasional. So this is what my second blank will have. Now it's like I cannot answer any one blank without looking at the other. 
Now, how do you go about doing something like this? Well, either you keep putting one by one these choices in the first blank and then see which one from the second blank works or you keep putting one by one the second blank, each of these in the second blank and then see which of the first blank choices will work. Now, because I have fewer choices here in the second blank, I'll start with this. Again, there's no rule as such. At this point, let me ask you this. Could you have arrived at the approach of solving this question with this level of clarity had you not spent the effort in thoroughly understanding the information presented? Such is the power of the process of owning the data set. And because this skill may not come naturally to many of you, we have created a course architecture that ensures that we teach you this skill through every guided quiz in the EGMAT DI course and we reinforce the same in every practice quiz. In fact, the way we applied translate process skills so comfortably in this question, in the EGMAT course, you will learn how to build this translate process skill through purpose-built exercises. Thus, throughout the DI course, through around 500 questions, you will learn such process skills so that you can also comfortably use the owning the data set approach. Let's now get back to the solution at hand. So if I say put rarely here, then I will say slightly less than dash respondents indicated that they ate the food at most rarely. And you know, at most rarely is simply just rarely based on the discussion. So you can ignore this. So you have to see slightly less than dash respondents indicated that they ate food rarely. Now look at the choices. Slightly less than 10% of male. Let's see if that really happened. So if I try to find 10% of male and I see rarely, rarely is is this right the horizontal lines it's more than even 20% this seems to be 30% so if my second blank is rarely then 10% of male is not the answer then you see you know 20% of female again you're only looking at rarely is this 20% no this is less than 10% out 30% of female out for the same reason because it's less than 10% 40% of the male no we just saw it was about 30% it's not yet reaching the 40% mark so all of the choices are rejected if rarely is the answer for the second blank, which means what? Which means rarely is not the answer for the second blank. Now I pick up the next one. So we repeat the process and this time we will take infrequently here. So at most infrequently now has some meaning. At most infrequently we know means a rare plus infrequent. You'll take those two categories together. So let's again highlight this as we go. So we'll again see uh, rare plus infrequent on the two charts. We'll have the rare part, which is the horizontal lines and the light blue solid part together. So this is how much? It is slightly less than 20% because you didn't really reach that. So slightly less than 20% of females. Oh, I have that. I can directly see the choice. Choice B is the correct answer. Because I saw it for female, obviously this 30% female is automatically out. You can still see it for the male, although it's not needed. Include both of these patterns and you'll see it is somewhere beyond 40%. And the choice that you have is slightly less than 40 when it's actually more than 40. So there you have your phone answer. Now, if you read the whole thing at once, slightly less than 20% female respondents indicated that they ate the food at most infrequently. And this is the final section. This is that slightly less slightly less than 20% that used rarely or infrequently that ate that food in this duration. So very, very interesting question, seeing two blanks together. And what all did we need to be able to do all of that nicely? First, we needed to understand the representation that these two charts use, what, the, what are these values that we see. Then we needed to very nicely translate all of this information that put our different categories in order. Both of these things together and our comfort with how to read these charts, that helped us fill these two blanks. Otherwise, usually filling one and then another independently is relatively easier. This one tests your understanding, your owning the data set capabilities to the top level.